Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us for today's webinar. Winter is coming. Get ready for year-end giving. Today we will cover Part 1, and on December 8th at 11 a.m., we will finish up with Part 2. And I am your host and chat facilitator, Lashika Phillips, and today's presenter is Michael Stein. Now I will share a little bit more about Michael in just a bit, but first I want to make sure that everyone is comfortable using ReadyTalk. So if you have any questions, oh let me go back so you can see. This is Michael Stein, the digital strategist who will be presenting. And again, I'm Lashika Phillips, uh, your host and be facilitating chat this morning. And as I mentioned, it's really important for us that you are comfortable with ReadyTalk. So I want to let you know that if you have any questions, feel free to chat them in the small box in the bottom left side of your screen. I also want to let you know that if you're on the phone, all lines are muted. And if you have any questions, then you should use the, the chat box. If you lose connection at any time, you are able to rejoin. Simply use the link that you used to join previously, and you will be able to regain access. I also want to let you know that as soon as the webinar is over, you will receive an email with today's presentation, uh, the recording, as well as all of the links that Michael will share on today. Um, also, please mark your calendar for upcoming webinars. You can go to TechSoup.org, click on Resources, and then click on Webinars. And if you did not know, check out TechSoup.org. We have a new website, uh, a lot of new features, and I highly recommend you check out the – we have a Nonprofits Favorites section. And last but not least, if your organization is on Twitter, we'd love for you to tweet us at TechSoup or use the hashtag TSWebinars. I also want to go over our mission here at TechSoup. Some of you may know and others may not know, but our mission is to build a dynamic bridge that enables civil society organizations and social change agents around the world like yourself to gain effective access to all of the resources that they need to design as well as implement solutions for a more equitable planet. And we are based here in uh, San Francisco, California. And I'm really curious. I want to know where you are. Where are you listening from? Feel free to share your location in the chat box. We really like to know where our, where our learners are, are tuning in from. I see North Carolina. Thank you so much for tuning in and Boston and all over. Thank you so much for joining us. We are happy to have you all join us today. And by the way, I should mention that all of the blue shaded area on the map before you, all of those areas, that is where TechSoup is providing and facilitating donation programs. And we do that by partnering with partners such as Adobe and Semantic and Cisco and all kinds of technology. Uh, it's GoDaddy, even Shopify. Uh, so I highly recommend visiting our website again, TechSoup.org, to learn more. And again, uh, check out our Nonprofit Favorites section. So uh, as I mentioned, I will uh, share a little bit uh, about Michael Stein and let him dive in because we only have a, a brief time today. We have a 30-minute webinar, and he has a lot of content for, for us today. So we're really excited. So uh, Michael has been a writer and a digital strategist to progressive social causes for more than 20 years. He is also the author of three books. And he has written several articles chronicling the rise of digital marketing, uh, mobile, uh, even online fundraising. He is also a contributor for uh, the TechSoup blog here. And he also works as a consultant to coach uh, nonprofits, foundations, 
and educators with a focus on marketing and fundraising. So we have the right person. You are with the right people at the right time, and we're going to learn some, some really good information so that these nonprofits can gear up and get ready because winter is coming. Michael, take it away. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lashika. That was a, that was a great intro. Um, hello, everybody. This is Michael Stein coming to you from Northern California. I'm in Berkeley. And we are going to spend the next 25 minutes talking about getting ready for year-end giving. So here's how I thought we would tackle the talk content in today's webinar, and we will continue it in a few weeks if you choose to join me for part two. So we'll talk first about Giving Tuesday. Uh, we need to do that because it's only 11 days away. Um, we'll then uh, segue and talk about preparing your website for year-end giving. We'll talk next about creating an email appeal series and the importance of that for fundraising. We will then talk a little bit about engagement on social media and the importance of um, integrating that into the mix for fundraising. And then we will end uh, talking about measuring everything, just the importance of constantly learning and tracking what we are doing. Great. So let's dive into our first topic and keep this going uh, as quickly as we can, although our sl my slides will be available to you later, and I do invite you to get in touch with me if you have any more specific questions. So Giving Tuesday, um, I mean, I'm sure that many of you are busy planning already since it's only 11 days away, but I wanted to reinforce a, the importance of a couple things. One is to find a campaign theme for Giving Tuesday. I know that Giving Tuesday is a theme in and of itself, but I think it's important uh, to connect the Giving Tuesday theme to something that is original and authentic within your organization, such as a community project or something that you're fundraising for that's going to happen next year or something that you're building on. So I think that's an important piece of the puzzle. Uh, I'm always asking people to sort of say, like, what worked last year at Giving Tuesday? Assuming you did something last year. Just really look back, see how much money you raised, how many donors you brought in, how, um, how, the different channels that you pushed out content, really what, what worked last year, maybe what didn't work last year, and help that, use that to reflect on how to build what you're doing this year. Um, you may be uh, partnering for Giving Tuesday, which is an important piece of the puzzle. There may be a business or two that you work with, a foundation, other nonprofits in the community. Um, there may be a local faith organization. So this is a great opportunity, I think, for, uh, for partnering uh, and, and building a great campaign theme around it. Um, and of course, the core piece, you know, setting a goal, I think is important. It's, it's such a small window, Giving Tuesday, because it's this one-day thing. Maybe you're raising a certain amount of money. Maybe you're trying to attract a certain number of new donors. Maybe you're recruiting some monthly donors. And maybe you, know, you, maybe you have a match, a challenge match that helps motivate people. But hopefully those things you can shape into your campaign theme and get people excited. I do want to put a super big shout out for givingtuesday.org, uh, which is the kind of official mothership of Giving Tuesday website. And there are some really terrific materials on there that I recommend. There's a, that I'm showing you here on the screen. There's a toolkit, uh, which is wonderful, uh, and there's also a set of case studies that has, you know, I don't know, 50 or 60 case studies from last year. Uh, and I use these a lot, and I recommend people take a look at these materials. They're real valuable, and they're free to download from the site. Um, another issue around Giving Tuesday really quick is really sort of getting the timing right. Giving Tuesday falls on a Tuesday. You have a, a, you know, a couple of other big events, Thanksgiving the week before. You've got a weekend. You've got Black Friday and Cyber Monday all kind of meshed in there. Um, some, obviously, you're going to be fundraising on Tuesday the 28th. But think a little bit about what makes sense for your messaging. A lot of people like to message you know, sort of before Thanksgiving to get people excited, introduce the theme. And then yeah, I think it's common for there to be a lot of messaging on the weekend itself. And then on Monday, it's, I think Monday is fair game for, you know, you can, you, know, you can give today or tomorrow, and then you build a lot of uh, attention on the 28th for um, this is the final day for giving. But I would say don't, don't limit yourself to just asking for money on the 28th and really, really expand um, as much as you can. 
A couple of other themes, just uh, you know, th think multi-channel for Giving Tuesday. So if you've got any events that are going on right before it, uh, there's no reason why you can't promote your Giving Tuesday fundraising. Uh, of course, you're going to want to be used, putting material on social media and on your web website. So again, just think, think multi-channel so that you can um, really uh, b b you know, build visibility. And of course, you're going to be doing emails and sending those out to your, to, to your list and your file. Um, inspiring millennials to give and recruiting social ambassadors and using videos, I think those are all just you know, other, other ways to think about um, how, to, how to make noise on social media. Video is going to be helpful. I've seen some terrific videos that people have created for this, for this one day activity. Again, you probably need a little bit of lead time to create videos, but I would, I would encourage you um, to think about those uh, assets uh, to help you uh, build, uh, build, your, build your campaign theme and to, to make as much noise as possible uh, on, online. Again, I'll just close this topic and just say, take a look at givingtuesday.org for those wonderful PDFs um, which you can download. Let's move on to our second theme today, which is preparing your website for the year-end giving season. And I have a couple of ideas that I wanted to share with you. The most obvious one, of course, is that just the importance of promoting your year-end fundraising appeals on your homepage. I mean, for most organizations, the homepage gets the most traffic. Um, so whether you have a carousel or whether you have a big section at the top for headlines, it's just really important that your website be poised for year-end giving. A lot of people have normal content there. This is a good time to switch out that content or to share the content. Again, you want to make sure you have a clear headline. You know, donate to help our you know, campaign for next year or give you know, tax deductible, help with, with our match. Just really get your, your headline and the value proposition of you know, why the gift really helps us do X or Y. Uh, really reinforce the importance of images to inspire people to give and the all-important button which would say donate now or, or help us with our match, whatever, whatever the messaging is going, to, is going to work best for you. Over here on the right, you know, just an example from uh, the SETI Institute, which was a client that I was helping just last week. And we were talking with them about, hey, let's get this carousel prepared for year end. And they have a little section over here on the right of their page. Um, and I wanted to make sure that that was appropriately ready uh, to promote their year end campaign. Here is another quick example. This one is from the Middle East Children's Alliance. Again, I was talking with them about, hey, let's take this panel at the top here that says 95% water in Gaza is unsafe. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna change that a little bit uh, and focus it a little bit on, on the on year end. Uh, and then that button which says learn more, we're going to change that, and it's going to turn into a button that says, um, it's going to say either uh, donate now or it's going to say um, match my gift. So again, Think about the best way that you can use your, um, your website um, to do that. And also, um, think about other places on your website uh, that you can uh, basically strengthen your appeal. If you're fundraising actually for a specific project or uh, the unveiling of something new or a campaign, um, you know, you could maybe, you know, this is again on the Middle East Children's Online site, they have a section on news and updates, and I suggest that let's, let's take this, this item here on project updates and make sure at least one of these um, is connected uh, to, uh, to your year, year end appeal. And then always I will remind everyone, you know, let's make sure that you're you know, looking at your website on, on mobile devices. If there's ways to improve the look and feel of those things, that's going to be important because you're going to get a lot of traffic from people using their mobile devices at the year end, especially if they get your, your emails, they're going to click through, and so it's just important to put your best foot forward in that way. Another big theme for preparing your website is the light box. So the light box is, are these pop-up you know, images that, that, that appear uh, on whenever a visitor comes to your site. I think they're very important at the year end to promote your fundraising. I definitely recommend that everyone have one for the final two weeks of the year. Um, if you feel that that's a little too much, then fine. Maybe it's the last week of the year. But the idea is that you really want to get in front of people. Uh, I think it should appear absolutely on the home page and in a perfect world on the top 20 pages of your site. And if you have the ability to control how often it shows, I would say you, know, you only want to show it to new visitors so if someone comes back again and again, they're not seeing it over and over. This particular example over here on the right is from the Children's National Health System in DC. I, I like this, this pop-up, this light box. 
uh, because it includes um, the gift amounts, which I think is an interesting way for people to see, to build some expectations. I mean, granted, $1,000 may be too much for some donors, but it starts at 35 the other amounts. It gets people thinking right away, yeah, I want to I help children this, this holiday season, and I love the Children's National Health System. Um, this particular example here is from the International Medical Corps. I just, you know, this picture just says the whole thing. It's a very strong photo. Photos are very important as part of light boxes. And again, you've got your headline, you've got your, um, you've got your buttons. So this is a nice, clear, uh, clear light box. Of course, when you click the, the, anywhere on the light box, the idea is that it takes the visitor to the donation page where they can continue uh, to, com to complete their donation. Another quick example, this one is from the SETI Institute that I was referencing before, the group of scientists. This one I thought was just clever with the planets. Uh, you don't, um, uh, doesn't have to always be square. This one's kind of circular. Uh, and this one, again, emphasizes that December 31 uh, a couple times. And this one was running for the last week of the year. I think I have one more example to show you. This one is from the Golden Gate National Parks Conservancy. This one's pretty fancy. It's got a countdown clock. Not everybody can pull that off, but I just wanted to mention that. Okay, our third topic is the email appeal series, and I wanted to just throw out a couple, couple thoughts in a few minutes, um, just the importance of creating an email appeal series that you can deploy during the month of December. Uh, I've seen people do you know, two or three in December, and I've seen other organizations do as many as nine or ten in December, and spreading them out. Um, you know, maybe most people tend to clump, you know, three or four of them during the last week of the year, just because that tends to be a busy time for giving. But other organizations you know, like to spread them out. Most people like to avoid the Christmas period, uh, but other people like to use the Christmas period. So it's really variable and really depends a little bit on you know, what, how your organization works, what the issues you work on, and also what else is going on with the messaging that you might have. Of course, the appeal series itself should increase in urgency. So you might start out talking about a match, and then you would as you get closer and closer to December 31, you might talk about the deadline coming up and only a few more days left. And I'm sure many of you uh, have lots of experience um, with that kind of, um, uh, with that kind of me messaging. Um, I think that you can also you have to think carefully about how you segment uh, for some of your different audiences. Um, you know, if people are lower level donors, make sure that when they, you know, that the, the messaging is appropriate for them. Um, and then, uh, yeah, just also uh, make sure that these are nice and mobile responsive so, because a lot of people, at least half, folks, half the folks are going to be seeing these on mobile devices. Um, so again, those, those are some um, quick considerations. Here's a quick look at two email appeal series. Again, this is from the Middle East Children's Alliance that I keep mentioning before. But, and the main reason I wanted to show these to you is that they're, clearly their focus is on using photography, and I just I love that just because it, you know, it, it carries the theme so strongly throughout their email appeal series. I think they did about five in December, and each one used a different photo. Uh, I just thought those were really, really strong. Uh, I wanted to show those to you. Uh, here's another one from the Plowshares Fund from a couple of years ago. Uh, there's not really a lot of photos here other than uh, a couple of local celebrities, including Michael Douglas, who used to be on their board. These are a little bit more focused on the match, but it gives you kind of a little bit of a different, a different idea of what an appeal series could look like. It's focused on the colors and really highlighting the match. Another couple of messages focused on tax deductibility uh, because some of the gift levels were, were kind of high. So that was a, that was a consideration um, for their audience. Um, let's see. Let's move on to our fourth topic, keeping a look at my clock here to make sure that uh, that I'm, that I'm on target with the time. Um, I think the key thing uh, that around year-end fundraising uh, for social media is, is really just the, the importance of the multi-channel element. In other words, if you are sending a series of email messages, which we just talked about, and if you have good visibility for your fundraising appeal on your website, which we also talked about, then really the social media is like the perfect complement for that. And it's just important uh, to, to just think multi-channel. Uh, and to make sure that you're integrating the content uh, appropriately. So as you deploy emails and they have different themes, or as you put different material on your website, like to, you know, create, create a, little, a little matrix so that you can keep track of you know, when you want to post content on social media that ties in well with it. 
And of course, uh, you know, you're going to put a, a, a fundraising appeal on social. You're going to create uh, links in your social media that are going to allow people to click through and go. In, a, in an ideal world, they would go directly to your donation page. Although I know you may want to try using some of the fundraising tools that are available, for example, on Facebook. No, nothing wrong with that. But I think the, the, you know, it's more common to see people have links that bring them you know, over back to your website where you have a little bit more control over, the, over that giving, giving amount. Um, social media like super important to focus uh, on use of images. Um, and uh, I, I just I, I, I love watching this happen in real time in December uh, and see how people are you know they're taking pictures from the emails they're thinking about you know how to how to create emotion on social media and also just important to, you know to to, to create uh, an, an engagement loop respond and thank people and engage if someone posts a comment um, if you're able to you know thank donors on social media that's that's great too with their permission but all all creating that um, that um, uh, just a little bit of that energy on social media um, is really uh, an, an, an important important piece of the puzzle. Uh, let's see. I'll mention a couple of uh, other important pieces about social media for fundraising that relates specifically to Facebook because this comes up a lot when I, when I work with organizations. One is that it is important, I believe, to have a little bit of budget set aside to boost your content during that that year-end December season when you're fundraising, as you know, only about you know 20% of your of your follower community is going to be reached with content organically, and you need to add a little bit of money into the Facebook advertising platform to boost it. I think it's money well spent. It's pretty inexpensive, um, and I think you know you can go on to the Facebook advertising platform and you can see how you know how, how much it's going to cost. So I definitely want to recommend that. Another thing which is a little bit more of an advanced idea uh, is that you can also take all the email addresses of your donors that you're reaching out to, and you can actually use the Facebook advertising platform to send them literally advertising on the Facebook platform that actually promotes your campaign. So again, it's a little bit more of an advanced feature on Facebook. Uh, it's also super affordable, but that's another idea that I think ties in well with this multi-channel uh, concept. So you're touching people through an email campaign, and then you're also going to get in front of them on the, on, on the Facebook platform um, with, with advertising. Again, the advertising is clickable, and then it takes people to your donation page. And I'm seeing a lot of organizations use this technique um, at, at the year end. Um, and I will uh, do our final topic just really quickly, and then we'll go to some questions. Uh, just the importance of measuring everything. Um, you know, I was at the very beginning. I said what worked last year, and the only way you're going to learn for next year is, of course, measuring everything that you can. And so, what I mean by measuring is, you know, uh, all the gifts you've received, how much you're getting, the average gift size, the number of donors, the number of new donors, the number of monthly donors, etc. So everything you can about the the revenue you're you're bringing in and the donor activity. You also want to understand the performance of everything by your different audience segments, you know, the, maybe the, the donors that are the small donors or the mid-size, um, or if you're looking at, for example, uh, just different groups of audiences that you may have organized by issue or by how they came to, to how you acquired that name. Any, any kind of performance you can do by segments is really great. And then also on your site, on your donation pages, just really important to measure how much traffic you're getting at year end. And if you can break that down by source, that's incredibly useful um, using something like Google Analytics, like how many came from the email, how many, how many clicks came from social media. And then also if you can even measure you know, of the people who got to your donation page, how many people completed the donation. We're going to talk a little bit more about this stuff uh, in a couple weeks, but just wanted to throw that out there. Um, I think I'm going to pause right there because uh, I wanted to get to 11.25 and see, open it up to questions or maybe pass it back to you, Lashika, if you wanted to uh, see what we do next here. Great. Thank you so much, Michael. That, that was a lot of information. I mean, a lot of different tools. And I think that, um, you know, if the organizations that are tuned in today, if, if they can commit to maybe taking one of 
the different tools or, or ideas that you've shared and implement, I mean, it really could be a game changer for year end for that organization. Uh, I do see a question here. It's a great question. So they want to know what resources are there to learn um, how to best edit websites. Let's see, Mario. I mean, I think I, I could interpret that in two ways. One, it could be a, like a technical question, like, hey, I want to change you know, how our website looks, and I want to edit it or change it physically. Another way to interpret it is you want to, you want to more like edit it in, in more of like a, a copy editing or a writing or a, in, a, in a language way. Um, I'm, so I'm not sure which one you meant, but I think if you're asking about technical questions, oh, you got a technical question. Thank you very much. So well, I, it's going to depend a little bit on you know, what platform your website is on. I mean, it could be on Drupal. It could be on WordPress. It could be um, uh, you know, on Wix and so on and so forth. So depending on which one of those platforms you're on, you know, typically that platform you know, offers uh, support packages or they can help you find another theme or that kind of stuff. If the website you know, was built uh, sort of more like handcrafted by somebody in the past, like someone for example built it on WordPress or Drupal for example, you know, there are a lot of really skilled um, consultants and contractors uh, around the country. And let me see, you are based in, uh, you're based in Burlington, North Carolina. I mean, oh, you wow. could, I, I would imagine that um, it might be not too hard to find a consultant that could help you uh, if, if you needed to sort of re re rebuild the site. Again, I don't know what platform you're on, but that may be – I mean, if you want to contact me separately uh, after you get my contact info from the email, I'd be happy to try to refer you to someone uh, in your area to help you, Mario. I'm so glad that you mentioned that, um, Mario, as well as Michael. Um, as far as consultants, um, I want to announce, I'm not sure if, if all of you are aware, but TechSoup has launched a new service called Consultant Connection. And it's, it's a program and it's a service um, as well as a directory. You, uh, the nonprofits have access to several different consultants um, around the country in several different uh, areas of expertise from data, database management to website design to Office 365, <laughs> uh, website and graphic design. Um, everything that, that you need, um, there is someone that, that can support you. And so the website that you want to visit, uh, Mario, and to anyone else that's listening that is in need of a consultant, and just know that all of these consultants that you find here have been vetted through TechSoup. Um, so that website is consultant.techsoup.org. Again, that's consultant.techsoup.org. And again, the name of that program is called Consultant Connection. Okay, it's a new program. Um, if you go to the website right now, you can see that it even says beta on there. Um, so, that, so that is an option there for you as well. Uh, did you have anything else you wanted to share, Michael? Oh, just to thank everybody for joining today, uh, and I hope we get a chance to speak again in a couple of weeks when we'll do part two of uh, year-end fundraising. We'll uh, discuss a couple of um, other more in-depth topics, uh, and always open to your, to your questions or comments um, if you have something that relates specifically to year-end. So back to you, Lashika. Thank you, everybody. Uh Thank you. Uh, thank you again, Michael. Thank you, everyone, uh, for joining. And Michael, those are it's a lot of <laughs> a lot of information, and we really look forward to having everyone join us again as we continue with part two on December eighth. Um, again, it'll be at 11 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. Uh, before we go. I want to find out what is one takeaway from today's webinar. Uh, what is the one thing that your organization, you'll try to get your organization to implement uh, before or for, for year end? Chat, chat in the box. We want to know. We want to know a takeaway. We want to know something that you are excited to share or excited to implement. And uh, we're really excited to see that. Thank you so much.
And so we do have another webinar. It's coming up on November 11th. I'm sorry, <laughs> November 30th. And it is um, part two in the Libraries and Social Media webinar series. It's a webinar that TechSoup is doing in uh, conjunction with Web Junction. And uh, again, Michael Stein and I will be back on December the 8th. Uh, if you have any questions, you know you can reach out to us at webinars at TechSoup.org. Look for the email after this webinar with all of the links, the recording, and everything that you need. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. Again, thank you uh, to ReadyTalk, our webinar sponsor. And uh, to each and all, have a great rest of the day.